Welcome to Rogue Trader. Please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up. Hello and welcome to my update for Avon Rubber. So I did quite a detailed video on Avon Rubber about a month ago and you can see that in the top right hand corner if you click on the link there. This is an update because they only just released their full year results. So I thought it'd be good to do an update just before I do my defensive stocks roundup. So Avon Rubber traditionally had a, a milking business. It was uh, selling the rubber teats for milking cows and all the uh, stuff surrounding that. And they also had a Avon protection, which consisted of chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear weapons protection. So that's essentially gas masks and rubber suits. And then they're recently acquired from a 3M subsidiary helmets and armor business. Now this year, they completed this 3M ballistic protection business takeover. They also purchased a company called Team Wendy's. And to pay for that, they divested their milk right dairy business. So you can see that the uh, from the 2018 revenues to the 2020 revenues, they've swapped the milk right into plus dairy business for helmets and armor. So this company was very interesting and their long term potential is if you look at uh, future combat soldier on Wikipedia, you can see how in the future it's anticipated that uh, soldiers will be wearing more like body armor, carapace body armor with these. They look like motorcycle helmets, but these are mandibled helmets. So the soldier has full protection. They look like space marines. Um, the way that modern warfare is currently going through a bit of a revolution, as I've covered on some of my other videos when I was covering BAE systems and also kinetic, it does make sense and it does make kind of um, a compelling case that isn't really, um, I mean, no one really is particularly talking about this. But for me, it gives this company long term potential in the future to really become like a runaway train in terms of its share price. So previously, their share price had actually gone up 4x since 2018. And we saw in my last video how they would acquired the 3M ballistic protection business for 91 million. And then they had sold their dairy business and then acquired this business Team Wendy's. So this was when I did that video. And since then, what happened is they did their 2020 full year results and their share price has dropped well over 20% since then, obviously in response to those full year results. I had a good check of their sales pipeline and you can see the detail in my previous video, but it all did check out, particularly from the acquisition of the 3M business. They really have got something like 0.7 billion of future sales coming in from all this armor plating and uh, US next generation integrated head protection system helmet. So I looked into this 3M ballistic protection business. You can see the detail in my previous video, but essentially it was deal of the century as far as I was concerned. It only cost them 0.1 billion and they got 0.7 billion of new order wins. I looked into the acquisition of Team Wendy and of course I went into detail in the previous video. But in summary, it really was quite a solid business in its own right. I was a little bit confused as to what was going on with their admin costs and stuff. It seemed to cause problems when you then went down to the net assets. And I think this detail work I put in was actually a predictor of when the results came out and the share price dropped. I just couldn't, when I went through all the numbers, the, um, in the end, it, it didn't, it, in the end, the numbers didn't quite look right. Even though in its own right, Team Wendy's really was quite a good, uh, quite a solid company. So now that they've released their 2020 full year, 
we've we can compare with before all this action of buying the 3m business buying team wendy's and selling the dairy business so the revenues are about the same they're around 166 million in 2018 and they're 168 million now the expenditure is slightly up but we have to consider that in their general and admin expenses there were 11.3 million attributed to all the takeover activity and stuff so it's still though about double up from 23 million to 37 million and then their operating profit which in the past had already which in the past had always been around 20 million that's dwindled now to 17 million if you take account of all these special things related to the takeovers and then the all important net income that's down from 33 million to 13 million and i guess this is why the share price dropped now in terms of assets they have doubled roughly from 2018 to 2020 and now that they've sold a dairy business their debt is low at around 50 million in total and they've got the benefit of now of 147 million in cash so i took a look at their consolidated cash flow statement and if we look at their normal activities we can see they generated quite a paltry three million from that and then in terms of their investing activities which obviously there was quite a lot of they spent 15 million on capex and r d they gained 164 million from the sale of the dairy business and it cost them 72 million to buy team wendy's in terms of their financing activities they allocated 21 million to pay off debt there was 5 million swilling around in miscellaneous finance expenses and it cost them 7 million to pay their dividends and they borrowed 51 million which obviously came in as a plus for their cash flows and financing activities so to summarize their cash flows overall they had 3 million from normal activities 164 million coming in as a big boon from selling their dairy business and they borrowed 51 million so that's a total of 218 million and they spent 72 million on acquisitions 15 million on capex and r d 7 million on dividends and they used 26 million to pay off debts plus a few bit of misc stuff so you can see they had a, a positive year in terms of cash flow but obviously we're more interested in what's the usual kind of situation so if we take away the 164 million for selling the dairy business and assume they won't be borrowing any money and then also assume they won't be doing any more takeovers next year we know that actually normally it will be 13 million according to my calculations i did because of all the general and admin expenses and stuff that were unique due to all the takeovers in terms of costs if they decide not to pay off any debts that would be four million miscellaneous costs so that would mean that normally there would be positive 30 million from normal activities and minus 26 million from normal costs so it starts to look a bit ugly now actually we do expect that them to have future growth however and that future growth would mean it should balance out or even be better so as you'll see in the last video i took a look at their revenue streams and in fact one thing that's different since i did that video is a new 10-year nato contract which brought in 33 million already but sizing all that up i worked out that they should have been in they should be getting about 250 million in revenues in 2021 which is 40 million up and then rising to about 300 million so then when we look at their normal profit and loss you can see how that extra 100 million could then translate down here in terms of net income certainly to a 4x in net income and maybe more 
so that was why the share price was booming i guess it was all this um future growth but some of that was upset they were they reported in a trading update that there were going to be delays to some of those revenues coming in because of some manufacturing issues but we do see the situation where although it looks pretty bad at the moment there is scope for some serious increase in net income and let's say conservatively a 4x but the problem is it's hard to know what the effect of the cost of sales would be for these new revenues so it's hard to predict but we could certainly say between 4x and maybe 8x but myself i don't like these kinds of uncertainties that it's hard to interpret in summary then of the changes their share price it had gone up 4x but since the share price has dropped it's only up two and a half their revenues are the same now the future revenues we expect to double the adjusted net income is half now but we expect it to perhaps 4x and maybe more their assets have doubled and they now have 147 million quid in cash and only 54 million in debt so i went to the london stock exchange website where you can get these useful estimates of their worth their revenue is kind of fairly small compared with these other comparators their price for earnings per share appears kind of okay if a little on the expensive side and their price to book is actually very expensive however these are all huge conglomerates so it's probably an unfair comparison we can see here that their price to earnings is a little, a little expensive but bear in mind if they're going to 4x then they'll become quite cheap and their enterprise value to a bit uh, is fairly expensive their price to book is fairly expensive price to cash flow very expensive and price to sales very very expensive and these estimates are dated 18th of December so they do take into account the recent share price drop so to summarize Avon are an excellent play on the future combat soldier concept with these acquisitions they've done so they've got all the parts to build the full body armor carapace that i think it's fairly likely soldiers will look like in the future plus these mandible design helmets that they're producing already so i really do think that there there's a lot of value here that's perhaps not even appreciated now and we know that they do have a fairly robust further income stream particularly from what they did with the uh, 3m subsidiary that they took over so net income could 4x if their costs are constrained and maybe even more than that and they are cash rich so they're looking pretty good but they're not really my personal profile for stock because for me there's too much uncertainty we're relying on these future sales happening when that isn't a certainty and so where I'd look at them is I'd definitely like to reevaluate them particularly if the share price continues to drop and I've identified at 2500 they'd be looking like um, a bargain really and so I'll definitely reevaluate them again and reconsider the risks so they're very interesting I think a lot of people with a more aggressive investment profile would be going in here but myself there's just a little bit too much uncertainty so that's why I prefer to wait and if the share price drops I'll definitely reevaluate them at lower prices